The following podcast may be disturbing to those who support hatred, terrorism, anti-Semitism, and discrimination. Viewer discretion is advised. Okay, and uh, hi everyone and, and welcome to How We Fought This. This is a, a format that we've created and the point of it is to bring the heroes, the heroes that most of us don't know, the people that work behind the scenes to really expose the terror ties and the anti-Semitism and the terror connections and everything that you know, don't know, don't necessarily know all the time that are, that are going on. And these are the hidden heroes and their amazing stories. And uh, we want to use this format to share these stories with you. So welcome everyone and welcome Maurice Hirsch. And uh, Maurice Hirsch, I think personally, um, I, I, first of all, I call you a friend, but second of all, I think you're an inspiration because you're one of the most uh, creative and certainly most amusing people that I've had the privilege of, uh, of uh, working with. Uh, and, and so thank you very much for, for agreeing to, to, to come here and be here with us today. Thank you for having me, if I, and, and really it's, a, it's, it's very mutual uh, uh, to see the work that you're doing and really all over the world, making an influence, making an impact. It's just tremendous. Uh, it's great to be a friend of yours. Great. So uh, we've uh, gathered here today to talk about a, a very serious issue. And this is something that, uh, that we all like to call, or the way that we call it, pay for slaying. Right? So this is a term that people may have heard, but I'm not sure everyone knows exactly what that, what that is in reference to. So if you can just give us a little bit of an introduction into what is pay, pay for slaying. So I would like you to, to introduce Pay for Slay uh, um, via two uh, um, very nice gentlemen. One is called Husni Najjar and the other one is called Khaled Rajoub. Khaled Rajoub is a terrorist. That's what he is. That's what he does. But why is he a terrorist? That's the question. Khaled Rajoub isn't your grassroots terrorist. He doesn't belong to a terrorist organization. He didn't grow up in the scouts of the terrorists. Khaled Rajoub was just down on his luck. He had built up debts. The debts kept on growing. He has five children. He has a big family. No work. So Khaled decided, how am I going to make money? Khaled's great answer was, I'm going to be a terrorist. Why am I going to be a terrorist? And he explains it in his investigation. I'm going to be a terrorist because if I just kill myself because of my debts, then my family is just going to have no, no father, no husband, no, no one to, to provide for them. But if I go and kill an Israeli, and then I'm shot by the Israeli forces or go to jail, I'm a winner. I've won the lotto. It means that I will receive a salary for the rest of my life. It means that my family will become heroes in the village that we live in. It means that we will be set financially, no more problems ever again for generations. So that's Khalid. Then you've got Husni Najjar. Husni Najjar is really more of a professional terrorist. But Husni knows how to work the system. Husni has been in jail a few times. But then he realized, you know what? Going to jail isn't necessarily a goal in and of itself. I have to get married. I have to buy a house. But buying a house costs money. Getting married costs money. So how do you finance a house and a, and a wedding and a wife and a family? Husni had the best plan in the world. Husni had already been in jail a few times. Husni decided he's going to set up a terror cell and they're going to go out and carry out uh, uh, terrorist attacks against Israeli targets. They'll go to jail for only a few years, only three or four years. That's enough until he can make the five-year period of time that Husni needs to spend in jail. Why does he need five years? That's, a, that, 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 that's like, you have to know the system in order to know how to work it, right? That's what every lawyer likes to do. So Husni would actually be a great lawyer. He needs five years because he knows that in the first five years that you're in jail, in, the, in an Israeli jail, you only get a salary for the time that you've been in jail. You get a little bit of unemployment pay after you're released. But once you've spent five years in jail, you are then guaranteed by the Palestinian Authority a lifetime salary. This is like a pension for life. All you have to do is spend five years in jail. So Husni was missing a, a, a few years from his five years. He'd got his first paycheck. He'd got the, 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 the release package that the Palestinian Authority gives you. But 
but he needed just a little bit more. So he went and carried out a few terrorist attacks and he went back to jail. Um, he got a little bit more than five years that he expected, um, but that was his plan. That really, those two stories in a nutshell are pay for slay, right? So, so you're saying that this is like, uh, you know, some kind of a membership uh, a card or something, right? I mean, if you're silver, then you only get this little amount and then you upgrade yourself to gold or platinum. And then all of a sudden you're a celebrity, you have all this money, you have pension, you have the town squares being called after you, you have all this, uh, all these different things. If you just, you know, successful enough to kind of elevate yourself, but not too much, because if you elevate yourself too much, you might spend too much time in jail. So that's kind of like, uh, something that they have to take into account before deciding what kind of terrorist attack they are going to commit. That's, that's exactly right, Yifra. The way the pay for slay works is that the longer you spend in jail, the more money you're paid. So the more severe the attack you, you carry out, the longer time you're going to be sentenced to a prison sentence, and the more money you're going to make on, on, on the way. Um, the Palestinian Media Watch were the ones who really discovered this whole program. Already in 2011, the founder of Palestinian uh, Media Watch, Itamar Marcus, came across an article in a Palestinian uh, uh, newspaper describing new regulations that had been promulgated by Mahmoud Abbas, this so-called moderate, where he raised the salaries of the terrorists by an incredible amount. This opened a door for Itamar into a whole, a whole world of research. He found out that in 2004, the Palestinian Authority had passed a law guaranteeing every terrorist a salary for the period of, of, of his imprisonment, and then a salary once he's released. In 2006, there were regulations put out. They were updated by, by Abbas again at the end of 2010 into 2011. And now you really have two major sets of regulations. One regulation sets the pay scales for the terrorists while they're in jail goes up over time. It starts at 1,400 shekel a month, which is really the minimum salary for in the Palestinian Authority. You make more as a terrorist than you do as an employee for the Palestinian Authority. It goes up over time to 12,000 shekel a month, which is the equivalent to the salary that's paid to a minister in the government. A minister in the government, wow. You're a, you're a terrorist or you're a minister in the government. It's the same thing, <laughs> exactly the same. So right. wait, Morris, I mean, I, I think a lot of people don't understand because, I mean, let's say, for example, um, you know, people can argue that this is some kind of, a, you know, a very, very um, advanced welfare system. I mean, let's say if I've committed a different crime, what if I've uh, committed uh, theft or, or rape or, or something like that? I mean, I, I know of a story, for example, that someone was sitting in the Israeli jail for, for rape. And, uh, you know, he was, he was going crazy trying to prove that it was actually, you know, a racist crime or a, a crime against the occupation. There was an, another motive to it other than criminal. Why? I mean, what's the, what's the story, really? How do you answer those type of allegations? Well, the, the, the story behind that is, firstly, that the, the Palestinian law says that this is a salary. They don't use the word social welfare. It's a salary. It is taxed like a salary. It is given to the terrorist himself. It's not there for the family of the terrorist. It's not there for his wife. We have a video of the wife of a terrorist coming to the Palestinian Minister of, of Prisoners Affairs and saying, but my husband doesn't give me any of the money. We have no money to eat. We have no money to feed my children. And the minister looks her straight in the eye and says, that's your problem. It's his salary. He can decide to do with it whatever he wants. If you're an indigent terrorist, you have no money, you're living in a shack, or if you're a rich terrorist, and you're living in a massive villa, you get the same sal exact same salary. There is no difference. There is no social welfare uh, um, category, needs-based requirement in order to, to receive the payment. You, the only requirement, two requirements that there are. One, you're a terrorist. Two, you've been arrested by Israel. That's the only requirement. <coughs> if you are arrested by Israel for stealing a car, an Israeli car, you don't get a salary because you're just a criminal. Criminals don't get salaries. The way the Palestinian Authority sees it is that every terrorist, including the Hamas terrorists, including people like Abdallah Barghouti, a mass murderer of 67 people, the, the Palestinian Authority sees them as their soldiers. The terrorists are their soldiers. They recruit them, they pay them, they incentivize them, they reward them for everything they've done because they're carrying out their actions, they're carrying out terrorism in the name of the Palestinian Authority. That's the way that it's seen.
even even Hamas terrorists. I mean, even though there is such a conflict between uh, the PA and Hamas, and they throw each other off roofs, rooftops, and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera, even even in the, those cases, they get the same salaries, they get the same you know respect and 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 social security and all that. They get the same salaries, no social security. <laughs> no social security. They get exactly the same salary. It doesn't matter whether you're, you're from Fatah, from Mahmoud Abbas's party, or whether you're, whether you're from Hamas, or whether you're from Palestinian Islamic Jihad, or whether you're from uh, 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 the PFLP, the, the Popular Front for Liberation of Palestine, and you just murdered a 17-year-old Israeli girl. It doesn't matter. As long as you're a terrorist, you get paid a salary. So I guess this is why that rapist uh, uh, was, uh, you know, was trying to say that he's actually a terrorist because, you know, he he's he will sit in jail the same amount of time, but here he he will get nothing. And in and if he's considered to be a terrorist, all of a sudden national hero uh, uh, salaries, et cetera, et cetera, right? That's without that's without that's without question correct. And and specifically with rapists, rapists rape is one of the few crimes in Israel where there's also a minimum sentence. For rapists to be to be recognized as an ideological terrorist is a big thing because there's a second part of pay to slay which i haven't yet described which you also have to understand the second part of pay to slay is that if you spend 10 years in jail right 10 years in jail and you're released you've received a salary all the way along you've received your your, your special grant for being released if you spend 10 years in jail, you are then guaranteed a position in the Palestinian Authority of some kind or another. There's only, for now, apart from the requirement, obviously, of being a terrorist and having spent 10 years in jail, there's only one requirement for this new position. That requirement, you have to listen to this carefully because it's amazing. The only requirement for that position is if you're actually called to come and work, you actually have to turn up for work. <laughs> sit at home and do nothing. And you'll never be called. How many people like that do you think there are? How many terrorists do you think there are that the Palestinian Authority is paying monthly salaries to for sitting at home and doing nothing? Well, I, mean, I don't know, but I think, you know, since the Palestinian Authority is functioning so well, maybe they don't need all these people, right? <laughs> that, that's 100 percent right. So, so I'll tell so you. How many people? How many people? In, in a recent interview, the, the, the current head, head of the Commission of Prisoners said there are between seven and eight thousand terrorists sitting at home, doing nothing, receiving a huge monthly salary, and do you know who's paying for it? Who's paying for it? The European Union. <laughs> that's right. It's the European Union who every time step in and say. Well, you know what? We're only going to pay the salaries of the Palestinian Authority's workers. Here, yeah, these are the workers. But now, now, now it appears that there's a, a, a new idea that's coming up. The Palestinian Authority the conclusion that, well, we can't just have 7,000, 8,000 people sitting at home getting salaries. That doesn't look good for us. Those people at Palestinian Media Watch have been running around Europe, really bashing our name, saying that we're employing terrorists. We have to find them a job. Where do you now think they're going to employ these terrorists? Where? In the security forces. <laughs> what a great idea. Let's say terrorists who spent 10 years in jail. Now, here I'll put in a, a little bit more serious. My background is as the head of the, the, the prosecution for jail and Samaria. Terrorists who receive at least 10 years in jail have committed serious terrorist offenses. These are not your garden variety of stone throwers, even the people throwing Molotov cocktails, even those throwing uh, incendiary devices, 10 years in jail is a very, very serious sentence. And it's, res and it's predominantly reserved for the serious terrorists. Now imagine how ridiculous this is. You're now going to employ these, these, the, the, these heavyweight terrorists in the same security forces that is meant to be fighting terrorism. That's just a joke, but that's part of pay for slay. Yeah. Guaranteeing the terrorists, you've got the, You've really got the holistic out, out, out overview of, 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 of Terror 101 and Terror Comfort. If you're arrested, we provide you with a lawyer. If you, while you're in jail, we'll provide you with a salary. When you're released, we'll give you a special grant to, to start off life. When you come out of jail, we'll guarantee you a salary for X amount of time or even a salary for the rest of your life. While you're in prison, you're entitled to study for a degree, get an education. The best thing 
Like when you hear people talking about moving from job to job, they're talking about social benefits. Well, does my new job have dental? That's it. Be a terrorist. You even get dental coverage. It's the best job in the world. I was just a, a, a thinking about it the other day. Pay for slate is really, obviously I'm going to give away a bit my age here. Um, if, you, if you've ever heard of Dire Straits, the, 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 the rock group, it's them. Money for nothing goes off their tricks for free, but, but it's money for nothing. That's just it. Dire Straits, where they were talking about something. They weren't talking about MTV. They were talking about pay for slate. Right. So let's, uh, let's talk uh, for a few minutes about how you've kind of, you know, stood in their way a little bit, exposed them, made it very uncomfortable for a lot of these entities that keep on supporting the PA financially, um, you know, took away a lot of their money. If I'm not mistaken, before PMW, before Itamar and you started dealing with this issue, very few people, even in Israel, but very few people around the world knew about this mechanism, understood it, and, and, and dared to act against it. And so I know since you've started dealing with this, a lot of change, a lot have happened, not perfect yet, but it's, it, those are amazing stories. So can you share a little bit of that? Yeah, so I have to say that Itamar really has been uh, uh, um, uh, uh, exposing pay for safe for, 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 for many, many years already with BMW um, from 2011 onwards, traveling to European parliaments, to foreign parliaments, to foreign governments, meeting with the uh, uh, members of, of, of the parliaments and of the governments, explaining how the PA works, in 2014, the pressure had grown so extensive on the PA that the PA really tried to deceive the world by closing the Ministry of Prisoners Affairs and saying that it no longer existed. Itamar and PMW managed to show that really the money that used to go to the Ministry of Prisoners now was going to the PLO and the, the new Commission of Prisoners had exactly the same people who were previously in the Ministry, they're now in the PLO Commission and really that exposed uh, uh, that whole process. So, so why go through that stunt? I mean, why were they ashamed of it? Were they trying to hide it all of a sudden? I mean, what was the story of creating this new entity supposedly and, and declaring that they are no longer funding terrorists? They're absolutely not ashamed of the whole pay for slave program. In fact, they are very proud of it. They declare that, Ahmoud Abbas has, has declared over and over again, that if there's one penny left in the coffers of the, of, of the Palestinian Authority, he would spend it first on the terrorists before anyone else. They're, they're, they're very, very proud of the whole pay for slay program and whole pay, pay for slay policy. That's not the problem. But they did and do need international aid. And the European governments were, were somewhat uncomfortable with the idea that their money could potentially be going to pay for the salaries uh, to terrorists. So the PA tried to hide it. The, 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 the deception there is unbelievable. Um, the corruption is unbelievable. It's almost inbred into the process, trying to hide the fact that you are now paying these salaries because the whole world accepts that paying salaries to terrorists, incentivizing and rewarding terrorism is, is a despicable thing to do. The Palestinians just don't care. So all they have to worry about is how they deceive the world into thinking that really, well, we're not really doing this anymore when truthfully they are. Um, that whole deception fell apart in 2018, openly disclosing that they were funding uh, um, the, the, the Ministry of Prisoners um, and openly saying and admitting that they were paying salaries. It came at a time of, of critical importance. Much of Itamar's work is to, ready to fruition in the, in the last few years. 2017, moving forward with the Taylor Force Act. Taylor Force was an American veteran, an officer in the American Army a veteran of Iraq and Afghanistan, um, and he came to Israel with his university program and walking along the beach in, in, in Jaffa, he was stabbed to death by a Palestinian terrorist. Um, when his family found out and his friends and, 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 and his fellow officers and soldiers found out that the Palestinian Authority was going to pay a reward to Taylor's murderer, they decided to do that, something and they initiated the Taylor Force Act. The Taylor Force Act says that any aid that the US government would like to give to the Palestinian Authority is conditional on abolishing the pay for slave policy. It was enacted in April 2018, and now we're just waiting for the Palestinian Authority to say, well, you know what? We want the $350 million that America gives us every year, 
and we're willing to abolish this program. But they haven't said that. Rather, they've really doubled down and said, we will carry on paying no matter what. And they're trying to put pressure on the, on, on the American politicians to change uh, uh, Taylor Force, to really allow them to continue using American money to incentivize and reward people who have murdered Americans. Um, that's what so so the, the American government has been paying in the past $350 million, is that what you're saying? That was taken away because of the Taylor Force Act because they finally realized that this huge amount of money is, is, is taken by the PA. You know, they turn it around and then they pay and incentivize people to go and murder civilians. Some of them are also American civilians. And that is, and, and that was the price that they had to pay. Right now, if correct me if I'm wrong, all of that American money no longer goes to the PA and we're all waiting for the Messiah to come or something, for something there in the leadership to change and make them kind of decide to change their policy in regards to paper slay. Is that right? That's 100% right. And, and you have to understand that's a tremendous loss for the Palestinian Authority. It's somewhere in the region of six to 7% of their entire budget was the American aid money. And they've given up on that because of their insistence to reward and incentivize terrorism. That's how important it is to them. It's not that the American government stopped the money. The American government can allocate funds to the Palestinian Authority. The Palestinian Authority has to open the door to that money. So you know what? We want American aid. Instead of saying that, the, the, the previous Palestinian uh, Prime Minister, Rami Khamdala, wrote to Secretary Pompeo and said, we don't want your money anymore. We're not interested in American aid. If the price is that we will have to give up on, pay, on, on incentivizing and rewarding terrorism. That's unacceptable. You Americans giving us money won't tell us what to do without, with that money. Won't, won't tell us what we're not to do. Not, won't tell us to stop funding terrorism. So $350 million, I, I, I assume that buys a lot of, uh, you know, test kits for Corona, uh, hospital, welfare, education, you know, building infrastructure, et cetera, et cetera. I, I, I think, you know, economy is not my expertise, but I imagine that that can actually help a lot. With, with building up a society, and uh, and I understand that they rather just pay the terrorists. So what's what's happening on the European front? I mean, I understand that the Europeans felt uncomfortable. I mean, they were trying to, you know, they thought they they you know that the Palestinians once once they moved the the ministry to the PLO, uh, they thought this problem was over. Then you you showed them consistently that this was just a ruse, and the money continues. What what's the status now? The European Union, and I have to say, doesn't give a damn. The European Union knows that their money is going into the Palestinian Authority's coffers. They try to argue that, well, we know where our money goes. They refuse to accept the idea that money is fungible. They refuse to accept the idea that if the European Union pays the welfare benefits of all of the Palestinian needy people, then the Palestinian Authority can use that money to pay, to pay the salaries to terrorists. While the European Union is donating more and more money every year to the Palestinian Authority, the Palestinian Authority is taking that money and using it to incentivize terrorism. Europeans really don't care. Um, the European Union constantly argues that we're only funding um, authorized personnel and authorized projects, ignoring the entire idea that the Palestinian Authority you can't take it apart into little bits. The Palestinian Authority pays the salaries of teachers. Well, the teaching is a whole different story, but they pay teachers, they pay the firemen, they pay security forces like release terrorists, and they also pay huge amounts of money to the PLO. The European Union doesn't care. Well, every, uh, you, you, from your experience, every European government is the same. No, it, there's not, any type of movement in, in, in what I believe is the right direction uh, within any of the European governments? There is one righteous government in, in, in all of Europe. It's the Dutch. The Dutch, at the end of 2019, um, after two presentations by Itamar to the Parliament and in Parliament, passed a resolution saying that the Dutch aid to the Palestinian Authority will be cut back 
because of the PA's pay for slave. They're, they're the only ones. The, the, the UK government initially denied that the Palestinian Authority even had such a program. But now they know that the Palestinian Authority does have, have, have such a program and, and they just don't care. They just say that well, money is not going uh, um, to the general budget. The PA minister, minister of, 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 of education said that the UK money is going directly to the PA's general budget, which funds pay for slave. So the UK might try and argue that, well, our money is clean. The Palestinians are saying to us, the UK money is being used by terrorists. Well, you know, the terrorists, I mean, they, they have different expenses, right? I mean, they have rent, they have food, so you don't necessarily pay for the weapon. I mean, I guess that's, that's kind of, that is the type of argument that they're making. I mean, if we're paying for the food or the widows or the orphanage or, you know, different things like that, we're not paying for uh, the, the weapons or the execution of the terror attack. But you don't think that there's like movement, even if you have to really kind of zoom out a lot to see that there was some kind of progress in the right direction in the last 10 years, because at least from my experience, we went from, you know, arguing with them that this is a real phenomena, that this is a real phenomena, to them acknowledging that there is, you know, such a policy within uh, the PA, to now trying to make different excuses. What do you think of that? Is, is there a movement in, in the right direction, even if it's very slow and, and, and insufficient at this point? I think the European governments uh, um, really do understand what I said before. That paying salaries to terrorism, rewarding terrorism, isn't something which is acceptable. They are unfortunately stuck in the idea that no matter what, we need to support the Palestinian Authority. They, they call it supporting the Palestinian people, which in, in, all, in, 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 in all truth, the Palestinian people do need a lot of support. Their leadership has failed them over and over again. Their leadership uses the money to incentivize terrorism and, and doesn't provide, it doesn't build the hospitals that you were talking about before. They don't build the infrastructure. They, they, they're using the money for their own good. And, and so the European governments really are trying to find this possibly an alternative way to funnel money to the Palestinian people, not via the Palestinian Authority. Unfortunately, the most experienced groups in that new order um, of working with the European Union are, 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 are often groups, NGOs, that have serious terror ties. Um, and again, you see the European money going, not again to the, to the needy people who really could use the money and to feed, to feed their families, but rather again to funding terrorism. Um, and the European Union, as we know, has been very, very slow on the, up, on the uptake. They won't give money to, directly to terrorist organizations, but they are very slow in recognizing that certain NGOs, as really as you guys have done amazing work with this, um, proving that certain NGOs are so connected with terrorist organizations that they should be seen as, ter as the terrorist organizations themselves. And, and, and so there is that movement. There is a slight change, but, but on the whole, the Palestinian Authority remains the sweetheart of Europe and they're still being uh, supported both directly from the European countries and individually and collectively through the European Union that keeps on pumping billions of shekels into the coffers of, of, of the PA without knowing at all where the money is going and partially knowing that the money is being used to reward and incentivize terrorism. Yeah, so I mean, I think that we will have to do another episode or, or 10 on the issue of NGOs because that's, you know, that's a whole other battlefield. Uh, and, I, you know, this is one of the main things that we also do in our organization in the ILF. Um, but the thing that, that, that kind of shocks me every time is that people don't understand the difference between civil society organizations within a democracy where you have freedom of speech, freedom of press, and then you see NGOs criticizing the government and, 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 and acting against the government and petitioning against the government, when in a case where you have a, a type of dictatorship, then you see all these NGOs, and in the Palestinian Authority, I once looked into it, it's like the third biggest industry uh, uh, in, the, in, the, in the entire Palestinian society. So you have all that, you know, you have hundreds, I don't even know if it's maybe thousands of NGOs, that, uh, and none of them speaks uh, a, a, a badly about the, 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 the PA, about the government. None of them is actually active against uh, 
uh, their own government, all of them are kind of enlisted in the battle against Israel in one way or another, which, which you would assume would make people wonder about that. Um, you know, the same thing as we see in Iran. I mean, you don't see any NGOs, uh, you know, uh, publishing a press release criticizing the government. It doesn't work like that. Um, anyway, so that's a different issue in a different episode. Uh, uh, but tell me, are you, uh, anything about plans uh, to the future, how, any creative ideas that you want to share at this point, how, I mean, I know that you guys keep on, you know, really bothering them. I mean, sometimes I see, you know, Palestinian press and they go off on Palestinian Media Watch, you know, it, it, it really shows how much you guys are a pain in the you know what. Um, and so what, anything you want to share at this point before we, uh, we finish this episode? Well, really, we did have potentially a great success just a few months ago. Um, the, the military government in Judea and Samaria adopted Israel's anti-terrorism law. Um, it included, because of my background, I knew to, to really take it apart on Israel's um, anti-terrorism. I'd been part of the, the, the discussions in the Knesset, passing the law in, in the first place. Um, and so we knew how to use the law to, 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 to make a change. Um, the new law said that any uh, um, action with terrorist funds, um, including a bank transaction, which is done in order to promote or reward someone for an act of terrorism, is now a criminal offence. That's a provision which exists all over the world almost, um, when you're talking about anti-terrorism laws. And it's something that we then took and we wrote to the Palestinian banks in Arabic and said, you've got to know, in a few weeks, this new prison provision is coming into force, and you are then going to be both civilly, potentially liable, but definitely criminally liable for any transfer, anything that you participate in the, in the payment of the salaries. The banks really got knocked, for, knocked out of the stadium. It was a home run. The Palestinian banks wrote to the Minister of Finance, the Palestinian Minister of Finance and said, friend, don't send her the money anymore. We don't want to give the money to the terrorists. We're not willing to be involved in that because we are going to be potentially liable. Um, that was a, 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 a tremendous success. It pushed the Palestinian Authority into a corner because the banks really, definitely the banks that have correspondent banks in the States and in Europe and in countries where they have more stringent terrorism laws, um, were very, very fearful of what would happen. Um, and it really has now forced the Palestinian Authority to consider different options. So now they're going to set up a, a specifically designed terror bank. The purpose of the new bank is only going to be to pay the salaries to the terrorists. They'll put in the, the other workers from the Palestinian Authority to give it that hint of legitimacy, um, but nothing uh, uh, really more than that. And that was a tremendous success. Sadly, um, Israel's uh, uh, Minister of Defense decided to step in on behalf of the Palestinian Authority and on behalf of the terrorists, and has for the last four months um, frozen that provision in the law. Um, that freeze, the, the third freeze, ends on the 30th of September, and we're hoping that he will now allow the law to come into force and will really be able to, 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 to put a stop to the payment of these salaries in a, in, in a very unique way. It's not using military force, it's not attacking the Palestinian Authority, it's not seizing the money from the terrorists, it's hitting the middleman. The banks, they don't have an ideological interest. They just want to make money. And if they're not willing to help in that whole process, then the whole process could uh, potentially come crumbling, crumbling down. Well, I have to say that's very, very creative because uh, you know we've seen these type of, of, of civil lawsuits against banks and we've seen them happen in the United States and, and other places, mainly in the United States. But to kind of you know connect the dots and to say, well, you know, the Palestinian banks have correspondent banks, we can hit them abroad and they're paying these salaries to terrorists. Every uh, uh, democracy in the world have these very particular laws against terror funding. There's there's no way out of it. I mean, I'm sure that you, you realize that if you, if, if you can go forward with this, this will be a major blow. There's no way to wire money. There is no way to pay salaries if, if, if you can't get any money out of the bank. Uh, so I, I think that's amazing and, and, and super creative. And I just, you know, on a personal note, I just wonder, do you ever want to kind of be a fly on the wall when, you know, when these terrorists or these leaders kind of read the news for the first time or hear about it for the first time? I, I, I would love to see, I would have loved to have seen the response 
of the bank managers when they received our letter and when they passed the letter on to the, to the, to the Ministry of Finance because it spread very, very quickly. We got press in, 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 in a Lebanese newspaper um, <laughs> a, a, about the threat. It, it, it was really uh, very good. But I have to say that you can sometimes see their response through the, through the media and, and, and that is just like incredible, ready to be that fly on the wall and see, <laughs> oh hell, what are they doing to us now? That's great. And, and on that note, I'll say that cautiously, I think we're on, 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 on really on a, a, um, the edge of another, I, I, what I hope to be a very, very interesting and a, a, um, powerful development, um, which is also, which, which really, opened up as a result of our letter and as a result of the Palestinian Authority's uh, um, response to the banks and, and to our letter. Um, and, and, and I hope that in the next few days, um, we'll actually be uh, uh, releasing a, a very uh, um, interesting new report, which focuses on a new category of potential uh, um, victims of, 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 of the Palestinian Authority and people who really didn't know what they were getting into when they signed contracts with the Palestinian Authority and with the banks and the Palestinian Authority. Um, and hopefully we're about to open that whole Pandora box. Um, watch this spot. Wow, well, you're really teasing us with this, uh, you know, can't wait to see now what, you know, what you come up with uh, next. Um, so how much, just before we end, how much is the total amount the, uh, the PA is paying uh, in, in salaries to terrorists annually? So, 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 so the total amount, we don't know. Um, because the PA has a million and one different ways to, uh, um, to cover these uh, expenses and to hide the expenses and to give the, the release terrorists jobs that really don't exist but then come out of the budgets of those ministries. We don't know the full amount. We know the amount that the PA openly admits to paying to terrorists in 2018, it was 502 million uh, um, shekel, which is, at the time is about $150 million. Um, in 2019, it was 517 million shekel, um, a few more million shekel uh, extra. Um, we're talking about really 350, 400 million shekel just in the last two years. In, 2000 and, in 2020, they're again trying to hide and their expenses again via the PLO, um, but we're watching them. We know how much the PLO had been spending over the last years. We're going to see the additional amount that the PLO suddenly received this year and spent this year. They're not fooling really anybody. Um, and I, I would assume that again this year we will see the payments somewhere in the region of anywhere between 450 to 500 million uh, uh, um, shekel. Um, again, that being expenditure. You have to take into account that the number of terrorist prisoners at the moment in Israeli jails is the lowest that it's been in 20 years. That's a, a true technically influence and impact on the amount the PA spends on, 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 on the salaries to terrorists, um, unless it's just another way for the PA leaders to, to siphon off another few hundred million shekels into their own pockets. <laughs> Well, okay. Well, yeah, I mean, look at their houses and cars. It looks uh, comfortable. Um, so, Mois will end by saying, you know, let's. I'm, I'm not optimistic of that happening anytime soon, but I'm, I can still be optimistic for the long run. Let's hope the world comes around, the European will come around. Let's hope there will be someday a different type of leadership within the Palestinian people. But in the meantime, we're not going to rest. We're going to continue giving them hell. This is our job. This is our lives. This is our future. So thank you for everything that you are doing uh, uh, for this cause. And thank you for agreeing to, to be here with us today. And uh, Shana Tova. Thanks for having us. And, uh, and if I can ask to, to, the, to, the, to the viewers, follow Palestinian Media Watch. It's interesting stuff. Shana Definitely. Tova. And we're going to put a link to the Palestinian Media Watch uh, uh, website uh, so everyone can access it easily. And, and, and I, I, I join that recommendation. Uh, definitely. Thank you, Maurice. Thank you.